Hello, my name is Zucho, and today we're going to be going over the basics on how to create an animated GIF in Photoshop. GIFs or GIFs are actually one of the best ways to share a design on social media. GIFs are easily shareable, they're nice to look at, people love them, and they're actually really easy to make. Let's go to Photoshop real quick, and as you can see, I already have a design selected. And the way a GIF works in Photoshop is that it's basically several layers imposed over each other in order to create the illusion of movement. In order to actually get these layers to move though, we're going to go to Window, Timeline, and there's two different ways that you can create GIFs in Photoshop. There's either keyframe animations, or then there's frame animations. We want to go through frame animations because it'll keep your file smaller and they're actually simpler and easier to handle. Now, each of these layers that I have here correspond to what's going to be a frame of my animation. But we only have one actual frame, so we want to make more frames. Let's click on this small icon down here and create four frames, one for each layer of my file. And as you can see as I cycle through this, it's only the first layer because that's currently the only one that's visible. So let's click on the second frame and make sure my second layer is visible. Click on my third frame and make sure my third layer is visible and then do the same thing for the fourth. And now as I cycle through these, you can see that there's some movement happening. Now, there's a couple things to note here. Underneath each frame, there is a five second ticker. That means that each of these frames will take five seconds before it cycles on to the next. And that's way too long for what we need. So let's select all of these layers or frames and click on the five seconds and make sure we go 2.2 seconds. You can also go to 0.1, you can go to no delay, you can play around with these. They don't have to be the same size or they don't have to take the same time. But for the purpose of this, let's go to 0.2. And now right down here, this is how many times this GIF is gonna loop if I decide to test it. So let's go to forever and press the space bar to make it cycle through our frames. And as you can see, there's already some animation happening. Like I said, these don't all have to take the same time. You can knock one down to 1 0.1 seconds. You can knock one down to no delay. And this will create some interesting discrepancies and variations in your design and in the animation. It might be interesting and it might be fun to try and test these out. Now, when I'm happy with the look of my GIF and when I'm happy with the animation, as I currently am, I think it's ready to save. So let's go to file, and this is important. Let's select save for web, because this is actually what's gonna allow us to create an animation and to be able to upload it and share it online as an animation. Make sure it's a, that the format is GIF, and you can play around with the colors, although keep in mind that if you go too low, it is gonna affect the look of your image. So let's select 128, and there's a couple of other things to note on this window other than the colors and the file. You'll be able to change the overall size of your document if you wish, but let's stick to 1200. And then you'll also be able to select the looping options for the GIF. Because we wanna share this online and we want most people to see it and be able to share this seamlessly, we're gonna go with forever because this is a very nice looping animation that can just go on and on and on and on. The other thing to note here is that underneath this file format, you'll be able to see the file size. And this is one of the things that you want to keep small in order to be able to upload and share this easily. So right now it's 136K, which is really, really good. Um, I've had experiences where I can go up to maybe a megabyte. Um, and the more complicated your designs, the bigger the GIF will be. So that is one thing to keep in mind, and testing is the best way to see what works and what doesn't. Once you're ready and you're ready to save, just hit save. We can call this one Skeptic Ghost and save it to our desktop. And now you have an image that's ready to be uploaded and shared with all your followers and hopefully all of the internet. Thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.